Welcome to the Top Video Game Podcast of the Week. It is Thursday, August 29th, 2013. Uh, from HorribleNight.com, we are coming at you live on Twitch TV. This is an interactive podcast, and I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joined this evening by my co-founder of this show and the site, Cole Monroe. Is that a question? You don't <laughs> yes. know my name? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's your name. Nick. I wonder if that's What's a going on, man? not much. I wonder if there's a name for statements accidentally coming out as questions because I didn't intend for it, but I don't know. <laughs> I ended up, I ended up there, but yeah, it's been a while, man. It has been a while. I, mean, I missed you guys. Do well, you... I don't really miss you because I listen to you every week. <laughs> yeah. um, we miss you. And sometimes, like, and sometimes, get into chat, but you don't get to see my face. No. We got a lot of a lot of gaming without Cole, even if you're witnessing no, us after crazy. the fact. But yeah. Um, but what else has been going on before we get to video games? Lots um, of movies. Yeah. So. This so is... I had a, a week a week from hell at work um, two weeks ago. Sure. And so my boss was like, "Hey, how about you take next Thursday and Friday off?" And so then I had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off, and I watched a movie a day. <laughs> and so that schedule was like, There Will Be Blood, Born Legacy, Dread, and Looper were the movies that I chose to watch. That is quite an oh, interesting marathon. And I, well, yeah, I mean, it was one a day, so it wasn't right in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'd never seen any, any of those movies. So, um, so yeah, like, yeah, which, what, they're all great movies in my opinion. I haven't seen Born Legacy, but where, where do you rank these? So, I was really surprised by Looper. Um, the whole like, it's old enough. The whole kid storyline part of it did not see that coming because <laughs> I don't remember that in the trailers. So I was kind of shocked by that. Uh, but I still I enjoyed the movie. I, I love me some Jiggle. So I lo- yeah I and that, and that guy uh, Ryan Johnson's like his first movie Break or his other movie with Jiggle. Oh, no shit. I, did, yeah. I only got like halfway through Brick, so. I really like Brick, too, the, so yeah, that's cool. Looper's been interesting. Like, people seem to be split on it. They either love it or hate it, and the people that hate it, I think, said the plot was predictable or something, but I thought it was, I thought it was kind of refreshing, so. I really yeah, like I it. I like it, too. I like it, too. Um, Dread. Man, Dread was pretty fun. Um, I want more movies like Dread. I want more just, yeah. like, self-contained, just action flick just it was a day in the life of judge dread it was fine it was it was yeah i loved how they stayed like contained in that building mm-hmm. like that part was really cool and then just the the slow motion effects i thought were really neat too um, um my favorite little feature of dread i think i've mentioned this before is that he never takes his helmet off so yeah. carl urban literally got the jo- the job because of his jawline which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> there will be blood. What? Yeah, I can't believe you there, hadn't okay. seen that. There, yeah, I can't believe I hadn't seen it either. Um, How do you I feel? love me some Daniel Day Lewis. How do you feel about milkshakes? I will drink them. Up. <laughs> no, um, that. Yeah, that was an interesting movie. Um, I really liked his character, even though he was kind of a an asshole, uh, but he was also kind of a badass, like. Who falls down a, a mine shaft, breaks their leg, crawls to the bank yeah. to cash in their money in the same day? That's pretty cool. Like he was just so driven by becoming wealthy and having that status. But I, I, I don't know. I thought it was really interesting. And then like how how the, the steps he would take to remain there, um, and just his anger and aggression, you know, while doing that too. I thought it was really interesting. That's that's a pretty intense Daniel Day Lewis role too. Like I mean. He's intense in everything he does, but there was just something about that character that like still resonates with me. Like, I I think of him in that role anytime I think of him. So, now, I haven't seen Born Legacy. How Born Legacy, Haw- starring Hawkeye. Yes, um, I I thought it was well done in terms of like storyline placement. Um, it basically takes place, I think, during the the third Born, Le- Born okay. movie. I, I don't remember what it's called. Supremacy, uh, I think. Supremacy, yeah. Um, so, like, Jason Bourne is kind of... He's not in the movie, but he's, you know... His presence is throughout the movie. Um, basically, like, they're shutting down the program uh, because of Jason Bourne. 
and uh, Hawkeye is a, <laughs> kind of a, a newer member of the program. And it, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's not going to like, it's not a there will be blood, you know. It's just yeah. kind of your, it's an action movie without a lot of thinking involved. But um, I don't know. I, some of it was looked really nice. Um, Pick a favorite of the four. Hmm. Which one do you want to watch again right now? How about that? Probably Looper. Okay. Just because of the the time travel thing, I always, I always, I love time travel movies, and I always like it. I always think about them. They do a long they, time afterwards. And they they like, they smartly address some of the like, the more obvious gaffes with it. It's like the flaws in the, their time travel logic, and just said, "Sure, yeah, don't overthink it." Basically, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, I don't know. Any, I want more sci-fi movies like that. I just, I want like lighter, lighter movies like that in Dread that are just. I don't need the big tr- like set up a trilogy and disappoint me later type of thing. I just, just get in, get out. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. So I was out working in the yard this evening, and I came back in, and uh, Lily, who's five years old and obviously developing a uh, pretty standout personality and her own tastes and things and that kind of thing runs up to me and says, we're going to watch one of mom's favorite movies. I'm like, okay. Um, and she put on nightmare before Christmas, which just blew my damn mind because, uh, I, who knows how many times I've seen that movie. Um, that was one of the founding reasons I even got interested in animation, which ties into like all my video game interests at some point. But, um, it was just kind of funny. I was like, "Oh, really? This is uh, one of my fiance's favorite movies. I didn't know that." And and now we're uh, uh, watching it with her five year old. It was it was it was pretty cool. And she was singing along to a lot of a lot of the oogie boogie stuff. But I hadn't watched that movie in in a while now. And also, I don't know, reminded me that Halloween's coming up really really quickly. So um, yeah, never... I was reminded that Halloween's coming up by going into Target and seeing candy corn yep. M Ms and pumpkin spice M Ms. I was yep. like. It's fucking August. Yeah, so this was my second like Halloween reference in the last two weeks, and I had the same reaction. Um, but yeah, uh, so that movie still holds up, and um, we also skipped last week's show because I I do play fantasy football. Have you ever played? I have, and I hate it. Okay, yeah, I understand. I like I like cheering for teams and not like worrying about my individual players and keeping track of all that shit. So I'll keep this brief, but last week at my office, we were trying to convince our uh, web development team uh, to to play it, uh, to play fantasy football, because um, we we knew they'd get into like the st- statistics side of it. So one of our guys actually gave a presentation on, on the ins and outs of how the game works. Oh my god! <laughs> and um, but purely from like the numbers standpoint, because one of my sure. one of my friends has played. Uh, fantasy football for like 12 years and uh, hates all sports like just a- across the board but he loves fantasy football so um, but anyway so we finally give it, we convinced the guys to play they seem to be pretty excited but one of them um, has started diving into trying to get to the, the data that actually you know uh, drives our league and find a way these are you know these are web programmers these guys are you know super smart guys so he's trying to tweak it so the reports he gets from his fantasy football league actually look like a fantasy RPG. Like, instead of getting seven points for a touchdown, he did seven points of damage on whatever, some some creature. <laughs> and so he's going to manipulate it so it spits out an actual fantasy RPG report, which I think is hilarious. So, um, Nerd. So, yeah, we might um, uh, quit Horrible Night after that makes a lot of money. So um, Yeah, that's, that's actually that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, on to video games. Yay. What have you been playing? What is your game of the week, Cole? Well, I've been playing quite a few things. Saints Row 4, obviously, like everybody else in gaming. Um, but my game of the week is Mario & Luigi Dream Team on the 3DS. Um, after I watched, um, I forget, I think it was last week's show or a couple weeks shows ago when you had it with Andy... Mm-hmm. Um, and he talked about his case that he got for his 3ds. Yeah, I I ordered one as well. Yeah, um, and it's nice. Like it feels really good in my big ass hands. <laughs> you do have uh, big hands. Yeah, and um, so anyway, I've been playing a lot of uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team. 
but it's it's my only complaint. I think it's great. It's fun. The writing's good. It's it's a little um, on the childish side, sure. Just like Mario and Luigi games are. Um, my only fault with it is the fact that they tutorialize every goddamn thing. I really, man. I I don't know. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but. Nintendo just seems to be skewing, not skewing younger and younger, and like beating you overhead with the over the head with that fact. I've never really f- almost felt oppressed by them by the by how much they go after the kids, but their tutorials, man, like there's gotta yeah, be a way. There's gotta be a way. They have. I mean, they should know how much of their audience do- doesn't need it. So give us the yeah. skip option. That's all I. That's all I want. Yeah, that's all I want. Skip. Uh, I was actually talking to a friend at work about. Um, we were talking about Skyward Sword <clears throat> yesterday, and he was like, "Yeah, I lost my save on my Wii when I transferred it to the Wii U." And I looked at that game. I was like, "I'd need to play it," but I just remember the beginning of that game being so <laughs> long, the tutorial section that he, it's dry. It doesn't want. To, it makes him not want to play it at all. And that's how I mean, Mario and Luigi Dream Team is like. It's not. <clears throat> it's not that it's. Terrible. It's not as bad. Oh, I think we lost Cole a little bit here. All right, we're you're back. Yeah. And okay, I just got signed out. Anyway, um, I'm like five hours into five six hours into the Mario Luigi's Dream Team, and they're still introducing like special moves and tutorializing them, <sighs> and it's fucking <sighs> maddening. That's too bad. That's too bad. But everything else <laughs> looks great. 3D is great. I mean, like, you like you it, like it, the 3D on the 3DS, don't you? I do. I do. I always play with it up. I know you talk to Andy about you guys play with it off yeah. most of the time now. Um, like I, I think I said this before on an old podcast. Like when I was on a plane, 3D is impossible. Um, but. You know, just sitting in the comfort of my own home, I, I enjoy it. Usually keep it on. I move, yeah, I just move it around too much. I don't know. I yeah. just I don't know if I'm a nervous gamer or just I hit those buttons too hard or what was going on. But yeah, um, I don't know. But like the Mario and Luigi, like the characters are really animated. All the characters are animated really well. Um, like I said, the storyline is, is is a little cutesy, but it's it's funny so far. And I don't know. Like the the battle system is really cool. It's it's you know turn based, but it's interactive. Like with quick times, I guess it's quick time stuff, but it's really mm-hmm. fun. So I, I mean, if you have a 3ds, I definitely recommend getting it. Yeah, I mean, I've liked all the Mario and Luigi games to this point, but it's just more of the uh, a lot of other uh, other games first type of thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, it's. I mean, I, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with the Mario RPGs. I played Paper Mario RPG on. Or Super Paper Mario on Wii, I think, and I hated it. Um, but I played Seven Stars on Super Nintendo a little bit too, and really liked it. And I, I think it's more reminiscent of that game than the Paper Mario series. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, something about I don't know what it is about Paper Mario that I never got into it, but I played yeah. the first Mario and Luigi game. Really loved it. Played played the second one a little bit, um, and I will probably pick this one up. Uh, Did you play in the like summer lull next year? What's that? Did you play Bowser's Inside Story at all? I think I played the intro or saw it or something, but I never uh-huh. got too in, into it. It it made me uncomfortable going inside Bowser. It was a weird premise. <sighs> yeah, I have to I have to draw my line somewhere. Not really. Somewhere. Yeah. Um. So yeah, naturally, after a few of the biggest uh, release weeks in August history, I think <laughs> uh, you and I are both playing 3DS games because. I talked about this game a little bit uh, earlier on our Night Force podcast, but I keep playing Steam World Dig, and it is—I don't—it has just charmed me beyond belief. It's co- complete surprise. Um, available on the eShop, and I don't know. Nintendo is obviously putting all their efforts into uh, the the 3DS at this point, and if they can continue to find these little perfect. Uh, portable, uh, portable games. Uh, I will keep paying attention to my 3DS because I right now I'm playing that more than my Vita. So, and we all know how sexy I think the Vita is. So, mm-hmm. um, I just in case you don't know anything about it, um, this is a world inhabited by steampunk robots, and you play as a robot that goes back to his dad's mine, and um, you 
essentially have to dig below the town to get uh, resources, and then you um, you have to come back up to sell those resources to get more better equipment to dig deeper, and just different stuff happens uh, uh, as you dig down. It's just like one continuous environment, from what I can tell, and you just get farther and farther and farther down, and it's just addictive as hell because you just you kind of come up and it in it you drop off all the minerals you've picked up and it it measures your progress and you unlock that next thing it's very much just it's a great sense of progression and just kind of dangles that carrot in front of you in everything that you do but the uh the art style is fantastic and the fact that it's just a 2d platformer i don't know it's just it it feels like terraria the terraria game that i want to play but it's just focused on the digging i don't have to do any of the creation stuff um I oh, just, that's cool. Yeah, I'm maybe more interested in that than. Yeah, it's there's no there's no creation. It's all adventure. It's all about digging a little deeper, unlocking your next ability, and exploring further. And um, you know, just as I was getting, I was kind of getting annoyed with it in that I dug so deep. Um, like you carry a your character carries a lantern, and the lantern only uh, lasts so long. So you either have to go up to the top to refill the lantern, or because your backpack's full of minerals, and I started getting really, really deep, and it just would take forever to climb back up. But literally, as I hit that point, it starts giving you different shortcuts to get back to the top, like a like Ooh. a teleporter shows up and that sort of stuff. That's so cool. just it just made it really easy to jump in and jump out. And I just find myself dropping 30 or 40, 45 minutes a day into that game and uh, not wanting to put it down. So, um, yeah, so this is like the first big eShop release that I didn't know about in a, in a while, and that was kind of one thing I really liked about... Um, the 3DS when I first got it, and it seemed like there was a little bit of a lull in those releases, but um, I, th- I just think some of these games, are des- if they're designed really smartly for that device, they're they're pretty addictive. And I also, th- the 2D games, I really like the 3D in, and so this looks really, yeah, uh, really yeah. good on that. So, okay, so the, the depth is really good on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got like, How much is it? Oh gosh, I want to say... Only ten or fifteen bucks. Let's look oh, it up. Oh. Steve, we'll check it out. Worst, cool. worst name though. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's look that up. I want to say ten, but uh, yeah, it's at most fifteen. You know, Nintendo doesn't have a good enough site for me to find that, but whatever. Um, yeah, of course not. Games of the week from chat. Here we go. Um, we ask our live audience to kind of contribute their own answers, and we also post the questions up on our Facebook page. Uh, Verdian, uh, his, <laughs> his game of the week is Just Cause 2. He's calling it his Saints Row 4. Uh, and, and I'm actually, I think I revisited Just Cause 2 a, f- a few weeks ago. It still holds up, and I even after playing Saints Row 4, I think there's still a place for this, this type of open world game, and it feels completely different than what Saints Row has to offer. Um... Josh's Game of the Week is Saints Row 4. His character, he is modeled after Hulk Hogan and even found a good uh, uh, voice level for, for his character and is killing that's, everything that's, with wrestling moves only. Yeah, that's pretty much how I play mine, too. Uh, mine is more Hollywood Hulk Hogan type. Uh, <laughs> blonde, hair, bl- blonde hair with a dark beard. Sure. Um, but And my guy's in like a uh, basketball jersey and basketball shorts right now, but I also... <laughs> I also do a ton of wrestling moves when when I'm fighting guys. I I That's funny. all the flashpoints I try to clear out all of them with just the wrestling moves. I was saying yeah. though, I wish you could do the like the less powerful moves too. I wish I could mix it up. Um, just mm-hmm. doing like the super yeah. powered ones. Like I, don't, I, was, I was like I want to build up. Yeah, all to you have, all you have is yeah, all you have is like kicks and then the super powered one. That's yeah. it. So that's how picky is that? Um, yeah, but yeah, are you no were, kidding. Are you in, uh, enjoying Saints Row? I am immensely. Yeah. Um, I'm probably four or five hours into it. Um, it's just... It's ridiculously awesome. I started focusing a little bit more on the story the last couple sessions, and it's still... It is... Uh, have you have you rescued uh, Miller yet? No, I'm about to. I'm about okay. to. Okay. Yeah. You'll like that. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's <laughs> so good. I feel like it's exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, and yeah, I'm so like, 
it's funny that I'm going to focus and finish this game compared to some of the other great games that I stopped playing in the middle of. So Yeah, definitely. Uh, Aaron's Game of the Week is Steam World Dig. It's his fault I'm playing it. Um, look for a review from him. Uh, he said he's working on one, but I'm also putting him on the spot now, so you guys can uh, give him hell when you have to wait another week for it. And um, Jason's uh, Game of the Week, he's got his Oregon, Oregon Trail series. Uh, on his YouTube channel, and uh, but he's going to play the game again. He says he has a serious love-hate relationship with the game, but I, I think I'm going to check it out. Both he and Ethan said it's replayable, so um, I want to uh, see what the the fuss is all about with that zombie Oregon Trail game. And then uh, Andy was streaming uh, the Bureau X Comedy Classified and actually liked the game, and it was better than he thought it would be, so... Uh, oh, cool. I think the setting of that game looks awesome. And, I think it does, too. Um, it, some of the action does look like it's just straight-up third-person cover-based shooter. Um, but I don't know. If the uh, if the setting can win out, I, I could see going, going back to it. So Okay. Uh, as far as HorribleNight.com, you said you've been stalking us. What stands out to you? Um. Just I've been honestly I haven't had a lot of whole, a lot of time to read anything on the side. I'm I, I kind of becoming Josh Lee, which is cool. Oh, no. But um, as long as you I don't do... post porn links in chat, it's fine. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, but I have been listening to all the podcasts and checking out uh, different streams and stuff, and I'm just really enjoying uh, all of that stuff. Like, yeah, I, I enjoy being on the podcast, but sometimes I just enjoy hearing my friends talk about video games. Like it's. It's like I'm in the room with them. And well, you've done a lot of shows with uh, Ethan, Josh, and I, but as far yeah. as any of the other guys that are starting showing up, any anybody you, you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I've known Andy for quite a long time, and uh, <laughs> he is a my relative. Whole life, my, my whole life, actually, <laughs> uh, and I've always enjoyed his. Uh, I used to have a podcast that he does with Jason, mm-hmm. and um, so I mean, it was. It was kind of funny that it took them that long to kind of discover us, I guess, and like become involved. It was so obvious, but it it was so obvious, yeah. And 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 I know, like I talked to like when Andy got the whole uh, cinema podcast going, um, you know, we, it was kind of around the same time that we got started, and so I know his focus was more on that than playing. He didn't play a lot of video games because I would talk to him about it, but um, I know like that's kind of switched, and he started playing a ton of video games and. Um, then you know, introduce Jason to us, and um, yeah, That's I mean, I've, I've met, I, I've only met Jason once, one time in person, but he, he, he you know, he's a cool dude. And yeah, I, I've I, actually, I'm glad he's, a, I'm glad he's a part of uh, the site. He and I actually got to hang out at Gen Con. It's just yeah, I a, saw the pictures. That's funny. Such a small world, but uh, it's yeah, it's been fun, and I think it's we're we're gonna keep rotating uh, people through both of our shows. So, um, and you'll definitely see those guys streaming as well. Um, yeah, and I really actually, you know, a shout out to their like evolution of gaming podcast that they do too. I've been catching up on those, and I'm really interested to see like where they go from here because they've been play- they've, the first one they showed was like trampoline thing, and <laughs> it was so fucking weird. <laughs> and but I watched the whole thing, like never seen the game before, some Genesis game with a Indiana Jones ripoff title uh, art anyway. And uh, it was just, I don't know, I just like it, you know, watched the Turok one last night. and just Yeah, they're just like, like they're 20, 30-minute episodes revisiting yeah. an old-school game, and uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're interesting. Yeah, so, what about uh, you? Any I'll, highlights? I want to give a shout-out to Gifford. Um, he just put together a mail this that he was really, really passionate about. Um, just basically um, calling on passive good gamers that, are playing online games and not speaking up when people are getting harassed. Uh, he's mm-hmm. just kind of sick of it, uh, but just really an impassioned article. So go check that out. Um, and I don't want to downplay that, but the thing that really stuck out to me recently is we sent Ethan to Gamescom, uh, which um, once he recovers from the nerd flu that he picked up there, we'll we'll do some podcasts and you'll see some more coverage there. But he did uh, before he succumbed to his illness, he uh, squeaked out a uh, Dead Rising Three preview. Uh, which I'm going to go ahead and state, even though I have the PS4 pre-ordered, like, to me, this is the only, like, s- possible system seller day one release that's coming out for either console. Like, this game, Dead Rising 3, just looks phenomenal. And 
the fact that Ethan was pretty high up on it. He's pretty... He, he, he can fall hard for zombie games, but he's also hard on them. So that came out weird, but you know what I mean. Um, and <laughs> they just kind of showed off that the game is also uh, going to be silly. Uh, um, people were worried, worried about the tone of it, and so he went into some detail and just got me pretty hyped for the game. Now, I'm not buying two consoles uh, this this season, but um, Xbox One is starting to make a stronger case with a lot of the things that they've they've changed, and this is the game that has my attention, uh, but I'm getting the PS4 for multiple other reasons. So, um, But it just kind of, it just really stood out to me. I was like, wow, yeah, if I, if I was basing this purely on the a one game that I had to play, this would be this would be my game at the moment. So Yes. Very nice. Um Alright, worst of the week in gaming. Let's let's start with Yeah, chat has actually actually never mind. You and chat have the same answer. So Yeah, um, I had I had to do a little thievery um tonight because I was I couldn't come up with anything. A little a little uh frazzled from my work day. But um what the fuck, Nintendo? <laughs> they had such a weird week. <sighs> like, I think it's cool that they're releasing Wind Waker HD on the eShop before they're releasing it in stores. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So this later, about a month from now, a little, a little less than a month from now. That's okay. You know, good job. That that Zelda Wii U looks kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the 3DS that came out last year or two years ago. I, I mean, honestly, the release list looks pretty good. I think there's yeah. four, or five, four or five Nintendo games I'm getting coming up. But Yeah, exactly. Um, but they also announced the 2DS. <laughs> so which, which, which part? Which I thought was a joke. I mean, did, you, did you see the video? Yes. The, the video even made it seem like a joke. Yes, it did. And I... And I, uh, my first thought was, I get it. I get the lower price. Mm-hmm. I understand for like kids or something. But hey, um, hey mom and dad, I want to I want a two DS game. Hey, hey mom, can you go to Target to get me a two DS game? Mom's at Target, looks for a two DS game. I'm not buying a three DS game. I know it's a two DS. Yeah, it's a two DS. Where uh, where do you, where are all your two DS games? Like. The naming convention is so screwy. Yeah, I can play DS and 3DS games, but the 3DS and 2DS are so <laughs> close that people are going to get confused, you know. And, I mean, I, and and Target and you know, no offense to any Target uh, workers out there, they're not necessarily going to be on top of the 2DS, 3DS naming scheme. Right. So that was the that was like the first thing. That this came is to my after head. Like, after the Wii U debacle, like, yeah, yeah. and how much they confuse people. Like, if they, yeah, I don't even know, like, why not, I understand the technology is a little more expensive for the 3DS, and that's kind of why you're going this way, to get a more budget no, I mean, all gaming system, but you're, I don't know, you're throwing one too many, uh... Yeah, they <laughs> went about it the wrong way, like, yeah. um... Yeah, I think it's the na- I, you nailed it as far as the naming goes. As far as that being the most confusing part, I get the price. I get I even get the design. Like when yeah, when they when they followed up with this is for five and six year olds. I looked at the things like yep. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm not gonna buy one, and I am upset. The only thing on the design I don't like is that it it doesn't do the clamshell stuff. Like I still think that's... yeah, it's weird. It's really weird because that's kind of like. That's part of their yeah. history, you know. But but the fact that it's one screen behind that thing, you know, that's that's why. And this is where they have to make mm-hmm. their money, and they they've got to put their bets in into the the mobile gaming while they get the Wii U figured out or their next steps with the Wii U figured out. So yeah, I get oh, yeah, that, and, but, and, but hold, and price what? drop on the Wii U as well. Yeah, that was. I'm glad oh. they finally admitted that. Like. And it, all those little updates, they came out like one at a time, all within the span of a few hours. And it was just like, did I admit, did, was it in a Nintendo Direct? I don't think it was. No, I, I don't felt, think it was. Yeah, it was just, it, it just, the way they announced it, and they just, their, their PR lately sucks. <laughs> it's just, and, and they don't understand how they're coming across to people. 
And like I said earlier, the fact that they're just so heavily skewing so young, it's just they're they're trying too hard with that stuff. And um, right, because I was starting to get back up on the on the 3ds. Honestly, the 3ds and even the Wii U's uh, eShop. Like I was like, mm-hmm. their eShop, they're they're doing really well in their eShops. Yeah. So this was just it's just you just can't help but laugh at them, and they just they mm-hmm. they keep making it a little little too easy and i hope i hope the consumers are smarter than we think they are but we i think we we know better too so yeah. uh, josh asks, thinks the thing looks like it was made by tiger electronics it, and it kind of does <laughs> and then uh yeah jason commented on the that the naming logic is pretty silly i just hey, i don't know what you do like <laughs> i don't know what you name it you yeah know? like even well, they screwed up by that. going with 3DS in general, so... Yeah, they did. It just needed to be DS, whatever, and yeah. whatever. I and then DS flat or something, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. DS Jr. 3DS Jr. Done. Yeah. Fucking done. Yeah. The d- goes right for your audience. Ah, I'm glad I solved their yeah. fucking problems. Um uh, Verdian's Worst of the Week, uh, SimCity came out on Mac, and apparently it's unplayable. Oh, so uh, just like when it was released. Yeah. Cool. Good God, <laughs> that franchise deserves so much, so much better. Also, we would take Baby 3DS. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> um, Aaron is almost sold on a Wii U thanks to the HD Wind Waker package, but not, but not quite. And I, I can't really blame anybody for still not having confidence in Nintendo having their shit together. But one thing. Wind Waker HD looks fucking gorgeous, um, but they put out. Yeah, a, but is it full price? Yeah, forty nine ninety nine. Fif- yep. Oh, uh, fifty bucks. Still, no. That's it. Needs to be thirty. It needs to be thirty. I'm, I'm still probably gonna buy it. Oh yeah, I will too. But I'm an idiot. Well, yeah, yeah we're both we Nintendo idiots for sure. Um, they put out a trailer for it detailing the hero mode. From what I've read, the only differences in hero mode are you take double damage, and hearts do not drop in the world like as far as uh to refill your health like the the big the big hearts do but that uh, sounds terrible but they made an entire video that's like three minutes long explaining those two features like showing trying to go after the dark souls to the crowd (laughs) yeah yeah, i mean it sounds mean but just like their explanation of it could have is summed up by two bullet points not a three doesn't need a three minute video that was kind of yeah they over they're so weird um, and Andy wishes that uh, the Spelunky Daily Challenges had a note, a notation feature, um, so you could communicate notes to your friends or take notes for yourself. Um, because I don't know, we do a lot of trash talking with our daily challenges, so um, I could I could definitely use that. My worst of the week is Reef Entertainment. Um, you're gonna know them be, uh, once they release the Rambo video game that looks like. Um, looks like yeah, <laughs> looks like Far Cry Zero, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a po- positive but the, way. But on but on the PlayStation Two, yeah, yeah, uh, released for modern consoles, so that's coming out. But they also picked up the rights for a Terminator's video game. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on with these two uh, these two franchises, but I don't and I don't know how they fell into Reef's lap. But I'd rather not have video games than than have the games that these guys are um if rambo's any um example of what they can do uh terminators and rambo can do better so also apparently terminator they're doing a new trilogy of movies so it'll be somewhat tied to those so i don't think we need terminators game no we don't best of the week um let's see here i'll kick us off so, Anthony Birch, um, funny side story here. When I went to PAX, gosh, right before the release of Borderlands 1, I was standing in line, and I was, it was, it was like an hour and a half line to get to play the game. And we literally got cut off. Uh, we were, must have been, per, they were allowing 10 people in per demo, and we were persons 11 and 12. So we were like right in front of the line uh, when they were bringing in the next batch of people. And, 
we're standing in line, and all of a sudden I see Anthony Birch, who at the time uh, was working for Destructoid, and they basically let him cut in front of me in line. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fast forward a few years, Anthony Birch was the lead writer on Borderlands 2. Uh, So I basically kind of saw his interview where he got introduced to the Gearbox guys. So uh, Mm -hmm. Anyway, he wrote a blog on Gearbox's... um, Gearbox's blog um, that got picked up by the Penny Arcade Report, and he basically detailed all of the back, kind of the backstory of his character, the characters in the Borderlands Two world, and some of the interesting decisions that they made um, around kind of breaking some um, some tra- traditional character archetypes um, because there's a lot of talk lately going around just about how it. I don't know, just how women are portrayed in games and just how um, exclusive gamers kind of make their, can kind of make our community, and he wanted to kind of break those walls down. So he went into specifics as to why they chose certain routes for characters. It's a really interesting article. Things that real, that stood out from it are, uh, in particular, uh, that there's been cosplay of Ellie, who's the, 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 the larger woman in the game and the fact that she's a, just a very, very strong self-image and he went into, like, why that's the case. And then the fact that two of the guys in the game are bisexual and um, that there's one character that has a stuttering problem because she's been tormented by Hyperion and there's also a quest line that harpoons the whole fake geek girl um Topic by calling it the fake geek guy, where um, I think Maya actually persecutes one of the other dudes for not being a real geek, and just some interesting commentary on stuff that you don't necessarily attribute to a game like Borderlands. And I don't know, it was really fascinating for me to kind of get in his head, and I think it's a really uh, great article to read. So I'll post the, that in the notes. But um, there are even for as you know, as silly as the humor can come across in Borderlands 2, the, the fact that there's more going on behind the scenes is... Uh, I, I, I love reading that stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. I didn't realize um, all that was in there, actually. Yeah. Because uh, I haven't gotten very far in that game, but that's really cool that they're, you know, including all those different types of people, because... You know, the, the, that's not something that you see in games a lot. He particularly called out. Have you watched any of the tropes versus women that that web series? Yeah, yeah, I watched the uh, a little bit of the first or second one. I can't remember. And I think one. in the, I think in the first one, she actually called out Borderlands Two for something in particular, and he just said, "I've now just made it my goal to not uh, ever be called out in something like that again." Like. He said it was kind of an over... I don't remember what the detail was, but he's mm-hmm. like, you know... So he's just trying to take an active role in in how they write for these characters that they create and That's and try cool. to be a lot more inclusive than uh, a lot of other games. So it was uh, it was really cool. Um, That's awesome. What's your best of the week? Well, I'm going to steal from chat. Um, <laughs> I really liked the um, Vita memory card price drop, finally. Because that 32 gigger was way overpriced. Um, I bought it. But, of course, I bought one already. At, um, well, on Amazon, it was $80, so it was still cheaper than like getting it in a store at 100 I think. But I just think it's – I think, you know, the more stores you can get for that thing, the better off you'll be, especially coming up in the future with all the indie games coming out there. I- um Lucky just got released, and I'm probably going to buy it there and on Steam um, just so I can play with you guys or be on the leaderboards with you guys. But just having that, like the indie games um, kind of momentum and the movement that they have is, is really awesome. And the the fact that you can cross, it's a cross buy where you can play it on your PlayStation. I mean, the, that's, as well. that's where the Vita is getting its life for me, is those. Yeah, you know, exactly. Those, those are, and that's not going to slow down when the PS4 comes out. Like, you can get this independent. No. And uh, I think the Vita price drop and the memory pri- price drop, card, yeah. I, it's just, I, I'm hoping it has a little bit of a resurgence here. Because, I mean, honestly, we've talked about, like, I'm still not advising people to jump out and buy these new consoles 
day one or even the first year. Just like wait and see and, you know, use your money, upgrade your PC a bit. The graphics will be comparable and and or maybe invest in one of the, the mobile platforms because there's tons of games coming out. I and mean, PS4 is going to be, the reason I'm excited about it is is all those indie games. But the fact that I'll be able to play them on my Vita 2 is just a, kind of an added bonus. Well, and then you can also play your PS4 games on your Vita. Um, yep. Stream that it. demo, that was at Gamescom for the Assassin's Creed 4 was pretty crazy. <laughs> or Black Flag or whatever it's called. It was pretty crazy. It looked really good. Uh, but yeah, like the, the fact that, you know, and you have you have a huge library of games going back with the PSP stuff that everybody missed out on because nobody had a PSP. Um, no respectable adult anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I love that thing. Um, not currently playing it that much, just because I've been 3DSing a lot. Um, but I'm, I would go back and forth. Like I always, I'll load something up real quick and, and play like some pinball or something um, on it. And that screen is gorgeous. So it's sexy, it's sexy. It's so good. Like if a 3DS had that screen, holy shit. <laughs> If the 2DS had that screen, it would be worth per- it would be worth buying. I have yeah, going back and forth between the two. It's it's. I wish that screen was on everything. So, yeah. um, from chat, Verdian gives a shout out to Guild Wars 2's first birthday, and uh, I'll post this link to some hot stats from their first year. I wish I had spent more time with that game. Um, and then. There's a badass Steam Greenlight anniversary sale going on as well. Uh, I think they put 50 of the Greenlit games uh, on sale up to like 75% off. Um, yeah, and they just released like 100 Greenlight games, didn't they? Yeah, they just Greenlit 100. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they're trying to remove the bottlenecks from that service, but uh, Aaron specifically called out the Rogue Legacies on sale. We've talked a lot about that. And then a La Milana. Coming to Vita and PlayStation as well. Yes, yes, they are coming to everything, <laughs> and that's okay. It'll be where you need yeah, it to be. That's great. Exactly. And let's see, Jason um, has been, you know, he does a lot of Let's Play videos, but he's actually excited about getting back into gaming without, you know, doing commentary over everything. He just hadn't done that in a while, and uh, um, we've been live streaming a lot, and it's I, I, I've been live streaming more than I've been not playing offline and so sometimes like i i definitely understand <laughs> it's like what should i be am i talking to myself um yeah sometimes you need to take a little break but uh he puts out some good stuff and then on the other side of the thing a- a- andy has been just trying to do a a mad dash to get as much content recorded before he goes to grad school so he's got he's recorded up to three week, weeks worth of content for his youtube channel um, and grad school starts here real soon. So good luck to him. We'll get out of here with a final question of the week. Uh, Cole, what is your next big RPG that you're looking forward to? So I got a gift card to GameSpot. GameStop? <laughs> you can give your money to GameSpot. I don't know what you're going to get out of it. I'm not, dude, I don't do that. Um, <laughs> and going into it, I was... You're just gonna get it was fifty dollars. It's like I'm just gonna get a Steam card. That's all I want. Just give me that money on Steam. I'm gonna get Saints Row Four with it. But then I saw Tales of Zillia. Uh huh. Tell and me about this. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I know it's a part of the the Tales mm-hmm. series that Namco puts out. Um, it looks it looks really nice. Like good animation. Um, I that's about all I can tell you. Um, I just. I debated it because I was like, oh, it's an RPG, you know. Um, it looks cool. I, maybe I should get it. And then I started thinking that I just bought Earthbound. I have The Witcher 2. I bought Final Fantasy 7. Okay. I have uh, the first two Wise, Ease, Wise? I don't know how to say it. We'll, call, um, we'll say Wise. Wise, because then people will know what I'm talking about. Uh, two, the first two Wise games I bought, like, the first day I had Steam... Um, let's see, what else? Uh, what RP Shadowrun Returns I bought. Uh, so I'm pretty much Baldur's like... Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. I almost bought that. Uh, both Fallouts. Zork. Uh, the Elder Scrolls. <laughs> you know, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty RPG heavy, as I always am. Uh, Deus Ex. But, um, so I put it back down and went with the sensible thing and bought Saints Row 4. 
Okay. <laughs> but um, so yeah, there's that. I don't. I don't. I actually, I don't think I'll ever play that. It was just you know something that came out recently that I was interested in. Yeah. Um, looking bad, maybe getting Final Fantasy X HD edition when it comes oh, out yeah. for Vita. Um, I'm not a huge. I'm not huge into Kingdom Hearts because I never really played it. So a little interested in the one and a half HD remix. Um. So there's, I mean, there's a couple. Um, Final Fantasy 15 is the big game on the horizon, though. Cool. Um, that just, I'm still thinking about it from E3. Um, it just looks really cool. But yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of RPG heavy right now, so I'm not really looking that much for far into the future. Yeah, I think the one I most worry about is I, I do want to play Witcher 2, so I can be ready Witcher for Witcher, Witcher, Witcher 3. So yeah, Witcher 3. Witcher 2 is so good, <laughs> but it's just so like. It's so deep, and there's just <laughs> so much stuff that it's it's kind of like intimidating. Like when you're playing it, it's awesome, but it's intimidating when you're thinking about playing. It. The only reason I'm not playing is because I've been playing Skyrim, so it's kind of Skyrim's fault. But yeah, um, I understand. There's yeah, no way I can balance both of those. No, yeah. no way. <laughs> so deep. How deep, Aaron? Balls deep. All right, we'll get out of here. <laughs> Cole, thanks for hanging out. Good talking with you, man. Yeah, you too. It was too long. It won't be that long next time. Chat, thanks always for your answers and top video game podcast of the week. We'll be back again next week to talk about our best and worst of gaming of that week. Exciting stuff. We'll see you. Bye.